statue of Christ in Rio de Janeiro looking over the city, there's an earthquake and the statue falls apart. So if you rely on Christ, he's going to crumble. He's not going to be there when things get really bad. Then we have people at the Sistine Chapel. Okay, and they're all praying in front of the Sistine Chapel. And how are they rewarded for praying and being faithful and waiting in front of the Sistine Chapel? Well, the chapel falls over and falls on them. And we have other images like that of religion being something that you can't trust in. Okay, what you do want to trust in is you want to trust in science. You want to trust in each other. Okay, science is going to build ships. And the ships will survive this terrible apocalypse. Okay, and that's how the film ends. And so once again, here is the message that you see repeated over and over and over again. Don't trust in God. He's not going to be there when things get bad. Trust in other things. All kinds of other things. And they're all over the place. Now, do you know what the budget was for that film? It cost $230 million to produce that film. Okay? That's pocket change compared to the things that are thrown at all of us. Every time you turn on that television set, every time you just pick a magazine off the rack, every time you turn on the radio, you'll hear the other voices saying, don't trust in God. Those voices are immense. They're numerous. They're powerful. How can we survive against this onslaught of other voices? Well, that brings us to our final point, beginning with the letter R. You need reinforcement. And that's on the next slide. Reinforcement. Because no one can do this alone. Okay? Now, in the garden, if you recall, when Adam and Eve faced off with the serpent, they did it alone. They didn't have to. They could have asked God to help them, and he surely would have. And you don't have to do it alone either. And I'm very sad when I see people who are clearly trying to do the Christian life all by themselves because they fall very quickly. Now, the help comes from two places. The first is God. Okay? And we see that in a well-known verse on the next slide. In Psalm 46, we see the words, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. He is ever-present. He wants to help you. He is happy to help you. And so we can call on him and ask for his help. Now, the other source of help is the fact that throughout the centuries, millions of people have done what I hope you did that brought you here. They have accepted Jesus as their Savior. And they all started working together they started writing things about their experiences. They got together in churches. They pray for each other. They teach each other. And there's an important verse about that on the next slide. It is from the book of Hebrews in chapter 10, verse 24, where we read, And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up, meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. So you want to find other believers to help you. You want to find a good church. You know what? This one seems pretty good to me. Okay, so if, if, if you're visiting, okay, if you're visiting, consider coming back. Make this your church home because you need to have people who also believe in God, who also want to put him first, who also want to turn away from the other voices who also want to be renewed, be renewed and have their minds transformed. And once you begin to grow, you can help them. You can spur others on to love and good deeds. You can pray for others. Maybe someday you will teach others. So trust in God, call upon him to help and find a good body of believers where you can get reinforcement. So let's see if we can pull this all together with our conclusion slide. Today we've asked the question, What's next? What's next after salvation? And so we visited some events from the past. We talked about Revelation, that God created a world, that he populated it with humans, and that he reveals himself to them. And we talked about rebellion, sadly the fact that the first humans chose to disobey, and if we're really honest about it, we choose to disobey a whole lot too. Okay, so we have a problem of sin. Fortunately, 
We cannot help ourselves, but God can. And God is willing. And God loves us and is gracious and is generous. So he created the whole plan of redemption. Now, if you're here and maybe you weren't here last week and you don't know what that is, I know Pastor Sam and others would be happy to talk with you. Please don't leave here without knowing the assurance of salvation that comes through Jesus Christ. If this is making sense to you, please come and talk to us. But for those who have already done that, you ask the question, what comes next? What comes next is we reprioritize. We begin the process of putting God first. We begin the process of replacement, of allowing God's values to replace our wrong-headed, sinful, self-centered values, the pattern of this world. And finally, we get reinforcement. We find a good group of believers who can pray for us and who can help us and encourage us along. And hopefully at some point, we participate in the process and help others. And so if you do all this, what's the final, what's next? What is next is that you are now participating in the wonderful plan that God has for you. You can look forward to an eternity of looking forward to wonderful things that God will reveal to you as you go through this fantastic adventure with him. Let's pray together. Our gracious Father, again, thank you. Thank you that though we rebelled against you, even though you gave us a world and knowledge of yourself, we, along with Adam and Eve, rebelled. But thank you, Father, that you are generous and loving, and you have offered redemption. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, who took away our sins on the cross, you have done wonderful things. You've lifted us up into the heavenly realms through Christ. You've done many things that we didn't even cover this morning. And they were all because of your generosity, and they're done. So help us, Father, to accept this, to believe on you in faith, and now move forward. Help us, Father, to put you first. Help us, Father, to replace the wrong-headed things on which we have surrounded ourselves with your values and your patterns that we learn about in your word. And Father, help us to be reinforced. If we're ever tempted to stay home on a Sunday, help us not to do that. Help us to come here. Help us to find believers who will encourage us along. And help each of us, Father, to participate, to encourage others too. And Father, we look forward to the wonderful things that you will show us on the great adventure that will last from now until eternity. Thank you, Father, for all these things because we talk about it in Jesus' name. Amen.
Um, I was assigned to, to give a testimony, but my testimony is boring, so I'd like to skip the video as we as listen to the workers themselves. So what time is it? applause for all the volunteers. We really are so blessed to have just a group of people in this church who are so driven to missions. It's a blessing to see my, have my children see it as well, because then you're also preaching to the future generations what it is to reach out and also, you know, save those, those who are far away. So um, why don't we all rise? Just a reminder, the missions offering is also going to be going around because it's Mission Sunday. Um, so just be mindful if you have, if you're moved to also we'll give to missions, please do. And let's all close in with a song, shall we? Sing. Uh, 